The Pentagon has officially greenlit its propaganda campaign. In a recent document just released by the DOD called Strategy for Operations in an Information Environment, the DOD actually documents strategies in which they are going to be countering what they believe is misinformation. Most likely, this has been in the works for quite some time. They release this report once every year during the fourth quarter, most likely. However, what is most fascinating is recently heat on TikTok has ramped up both in Congress and on the state level due to Osama bin Laden's letter to America going viral. A lot of people have a lot of concern about this letter and different groups' reactions to it actually having them sympathize with Osama bin Laden, which is not good for the American upper class military industrial complex. So it is no coincidence that this report is now being released. The findings of the report are pretty basic and simple. And if anything, they're stating that they're doing things that we thought they kind of already were doing. The number one thing is that they are going to start coordinating with other intel agencies around marketing. They obviously want to start making sure that there is a more pro-America, pro-military message throughout not just our intel agencies, but our universities as well. They want to start getting involved in the educational process to ensure that pro-American, potentially pro-war uh, educational material is available to all these students throughout the United States. It goes even further. The document talks about building partnerships with media groups. Now, there's already evidence that this is happening, maybe not from the Pentagon, but definitely from the FBI and the CIA. It's no coincidence that a lot of TV shows and a lot of films portray the FBI, the DOD, and the CIA in a positive light. The only thing that you can find negative is normally some sort of documentary, but most action shows that you can think of that I could name that you would know all make being an FBI agent or a military officer pretty damn cool. One of the more notable facets of that propaganda is actually Marvel movies. Now, Marvel Studios has never accepted, to my knowledge, direct cash infusions or money from the DOD. However, Marvel has accepted military equipment from the DOD on the condition that they portray the military and the United States in a friendly manner. Now, once again, none of this should be news, and a lot of this should be expected. And in fact, maybe some of it's not that disagreeable. After all, you hear people in the news talking about all the time how we have too many Americans who hate America. We need Americans to love America, and you do. You need Americans to love America if you want to succeed in anything. If you have a country that hates itself, it will go nowhere, and it'll end up crashing and burning. However, where this gets a little fishy is accurate information. So for example, if what prompted this paper was Osama bin Laden's letter to America, then it makes you question a few things. After all, that letter to America isn't necessarily factual. It's simply just an opinion and Americans should be allowed to view it. Our interpretations should be legal of that letter. You shouldn't be able to tell me what to think about it. I should be able to come to my own conclusion. Now, it's no coincidence also that this was spread through TikTok which is often used as a quote unquote Chinese misinformation app. But here's where this gets tricky. TikTok is unfortunately or fortunately, one of the few media companies that is not strictly owned and a part of the American propaganda machine already, which means kind of like Twitter, there's a resource of information that can spread quickly and sometimes accurately. Now, obviously, if you're talking about certain topics on TikTok, you will get shadow banned and that happens quite often. On the flip side, what you might get shadow banned on YouTube for, you might not get shadow banned on TikTok for, which means you kind of have to develop a different media strategy depending on the platform that you are going to be releasing content on, which is why it's best to release content on all of the platforms in order to get around some of those hurdles. But with DOD getting involved in the game, I would no doubt see a version of certain DOD personalities starting to get involved on even TikTok, mass producing media on Instagram, Facebook, and started getting more involved in, say, reality TV shows. Reality TV is probably one of the most number one watched TV shows, especially for women and housewives who hold crazy amount of political influence in modern day America. Now, once again, we most likely will not know a lot about these partnerships taking place. And in fact, we should already probably guess that some of these partnerships have already happened and that the Pentagon and the DOD already have some of this information warfare in the works. But what's interesting to note is that during the release of this report, that they are so open and brazen about what they plan and intend to do. Also, it's worth noting that other agencies in our military 
are most likely already doing this. Where it gets tricky is, yes, as an American, I want pro-American content. Yes, as an American, I want to fight Russia and Chinese propaganda. But what happens when the American propaganda is actually negative toward Americans themselves, which more often than not happens? What happens if that American propaganda is not actually interested in serving Americans, right? What happens if that American propaganda seeks to actually hurt us in more way than one? That's where it gets tricky. Some of the best pro-American content that you can find is actually led by grassroots Americans. You don't necessarily need the Department of Defense building its own material. If I saw that the Department of Defense was getting behind certain grassroots movements, I'd probably turn a suspicious eye toward those grass movements themselves. The most important thing to note is this. The government often publishes information for all of us to know about what they are already doing. And so we need to take note that officially, the Pentagon and the Department of Defense are saying that we are going to start building relationships with mass media outlets and other government agencies and universities to, to start producing pro-American or at least pro-Department of Defense information. So if you see a gradual switch over time in the next one to two years around the information that universities are starting to pump out or what we're seeing in the media, take note that there's more than meets the eye and that there is most likely a large amount of cash behind the messages that you are hearing.